people take their time to support a vision, uh, to support a program, and um, to be here tonight. And uh, getting a collection of people like this together is no, no easy task. We had scheduled this for the um, Thursday, the 9th of November, and I got an email from Linda ben Menasha from New South Wales Jewish Board of Deputies to bring to my attention that it was Crystal Night, which is a, a night that is a very important part of the Jewish community, uh, remembering the start of the Holocaust. Um, Madinia Abdurrahman, our president, also pointed out that Thursday night um, is the beginning of Juma, because of course Friday, for some people, Jews and Muslims, starts the night before. So Thursday night is actually Friday. Um, so we settled on a Wednesday. I would have thought that all religions could be okay with a Wednesday, except that of course in this sports mad society where we worship sport, Australia versus Honduras, thank you very much. <laughs> Um, there's a shake not far from here, and uh, he has a knife with my name on it in his kitchen. Now, it's not literal, um, but he does have a knife that is designated for me that he bought um, so that he can, when I come and have breakfast with him, I can cut kosher vegetables and still be kosher. Um, and we were talking uh, on Monday morning about how we make this work? How do we make it work as a society? And he made the point that the easy way is relativism. An easy way is to say, look, I believe in my truth, but your truth is just as true as my truth because no one in a way believes in anything. That was his view. And um, I said, so what, how do we get along then? And he said, look, they have different domains in life. In theology and philosophy, there is no pluralism and there is no tolerance. There is simply truth. But then there is the social domain. And I said, Sheikh, does that mean basically that you respect my right to be wrong? And he's, well, it was a silly question actually, because you see, um, actions speak louder than words. And this particular Sheikh, I sat with him on the floor in his lounge room on the carpet. And he's a man with uh, tremendous empathy, who has always treated me with great respect, made me feel welcome in his home and in his mosque, where 600 members of his community um, have had the opportunity to listen to me and Father Patrick and other people from other faiths more than, on one, more than one occasion. This is a man who practices deep respect and dignity for all, even as he holds strong opinions about what the truth is. Um, I ask his family members who are here today to pass on my big thanks to this wonderful man. You guys know who you are. You know, people talk a lot about values. Values are something that divides us. They're Australian values, today Christian values. And of course, when you talk about values, sometimes it includes some and excludes others. Something's happened two and a half kilometers from here last week that I think said to shed some light on this. Um, it was a very sad event at Banksy Road Primary School. Two precious young lives have been extinguished. I know there are people here tonight who've been personally um, feel very close to what happened. And uh, our thoughts and prayers are with, with you. But in my tradition, after a death, it's also a time to reflect. And so, I will reflect on for a moment. I'll reflect on what it was like for us as an Australian community to hear the words of the father of one of the boys who lost his life in that accident, express his forgiveness and invitation to the person who caused the accident to come to his home um, for a meal. Let us not talk about the values of just one group or another. Let's talk about human values. Of course, within Australia, we need to respect each other and celebrate this wonderful place. But we can celebrate it as human beings who come together with shared values and a shared commitment to, to compassion, to mercy, to justice, to dignity. And as Bassam talked about before, dignity that everybody feels welcome. Let us reflect on the beauty within the pain. But let us also reflect 
now 2017, and I reflect on the journey that brought us here tonight. In 2003, Madini Abdurrahman, our president, welcomed a team of Jew, Muslim, and Christian to her school at Kingsgrove. And I went from St. Ives across Sydney, just as a lot of people tonight made the, the, the trip from lots of different places. In 2004, Costa Despina Vasakis held, held a little gathering at your home. Um, family governors of um, the goodness and kindness was the forerunner of Together for Humanity. Leslie and Ginny, uh, Ginny Green were there, uh, Talal Yassin, and um, seeds were planted in 2004. And here we are 13 years later. 2005, 2006, Ula El Hassan, Mohammed Dukali, came on deck. It was after the Cronulla riots. And Ula El Hassan walked into a school in Cronulla. And um, the kids had never met a Muslim person before in their lives. We laughed together. And at the end of the program, one of the primary school kids walked up to Ula, high-fived and said, you're so cool. <laughs> and we've had others. Josie Lacey has given us advice. Maha, Jamal Rifi. Uh, the late, late uh, Sheikh Shami is quite involved. And Donna Jacob Saif came on board in 2008. This dynamic that we witnessed in Cronulla, that you saw on the video, um, has been experienced in one form or another by 100,000 students across Australia. And that's been made possible by your help, and thank you to every single person here tonight. Our work also addresses what Bassam talked about before, belonging. You belong. Everyone needs a feeling of belonging. And it's a little bit harder for some people than others. We heard the wonderful band from Punchbowl Boys High School, a bunch of joyous young people. Um, but Punchbowl Boys High School, like any school, has got unique challenges. And I spend every Monday at Punchbowl Boys High School talking to the boys about lots of things with Taha Alam, who's getting married soon, Mabruk. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> and Levon, is a Lebanese Christian, and other people from other communities. Hezi Lazarov's been there a fair bit. People from different, and Kate Xavier has been doing amazing work in, as, as education officer. <laughs> Kate is an honorary Lebo, by the way. A real Bankstown girl, and she does, she really mixes it up with the boys at Punchbowl. Last Monday, we were up at Punchbowl, and um, an Aboriginal elder came and talked to the boys a little bit about belonging. She told her own story growing up on Thursday Island. But she moved to Penrith. She married a white guy, and she had a lovely son. She showed us a photo, a very handsome young man. And he was too white to be black and too black to be white and felt a little bit lost between the different communities growing up in Penrith. He also vicariously carried the pain that he had heard about from people in his community, the racism experienced by his mum, and the broader Aboriginal experience. He had some mental health issues, mental health challenges, and his mum realised that he was having a tough time. He started to withdraw. He told uh, the children at school, told his mum, if anyone from school asks about me, just tell them I've joined the band and I've gone to travel around Australia. He didn't want to see them. She took him back to Thursday Island, tried to heal back with her community in a small place, and uh, he seemed to be doing well, but he needed a certain kind of treatment that was only available in Sydney. Mom went to the bank manager to get a loan to move back to Sydney. She needed to borrow $4,000. As she traveled up to Thursday Island, her son said, we're okay, mom, hey, we're okay, we're going home. And that day she said, look, I'm gonna take you back to Sydney, you're gonna get better, I'm getting this loan. When she came home, he wasn't home. He'd gone off into the bush and he took his own life. And auntie talked to the boys about her experience, her experience with the challenges of belonging. And the boys responded without a deeper understanding of different cultures, experiences, different challenges and struggles, with justice, with belonging. And they were moved by it, and they were strengthened by it. 
and their understanding of the challenges of living with difference, with prejudice, with injustice in an imperfect world was strengthened. This is our work. We have three challenges because we can't do this alone. We need a strong partnership with teachers and that's the next phase of our work. You can see on the walls around you, that's a partnership with Northam Grammar, Northam Grammar School, a Christian School in Northwest Sydney, where we're starting to see a stronger engagement by teachers through the Good Practice Project involving 20 schools. We need to train teachers, we need to resource teachers, we need to guide teachers, because if we're going to get the change we want, teachers have a vital role to play, and that's on our agenda. Number two, we need to strengthen our program, we need to document it, and we need to make it available to other jurisdictions. I'll be flying to Adelaide on Sunday to train a new set of presenters there. Donna and a few other of our people were in Perth recently, worked with 1,100 children in schools with Perth, a Perth-grown, organically growing together the humanity in Perth in partnership with the Museum of Freedom and Tolerance. And number three is that boring thing called money. We do need to make sure that we can pay for this, we can resource it. We need that combination of educational and financial resources to make it work. Um, the government has entrusted us in this partnership. The government has put forward, as part of our budget for this three-year period, a 1.5 million. The government has put 800,000 towards that. We've already had 200,000 uh, contributions from the community, and we have another 500,000 to raise over the next 12 months. So let us seize the moment tonight to continue to build trust between our communities, to build on the work of so many people, the inspiration of Adam and